Good evening. Welcome to tonight's Lakeville City Mayoral Candidate Forum, sponsored by the Lakeville Area Chamber of Commerce. I am Lowell Coleman of Citizens Bank, Minnesota, and a member of the Lakeville Chamber of Commerce and Citi uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau Board of Directors, and will be tonight's moderator. The timekeeper for tonight's forum will be Tim Roach, President of the Lakeville Area Chamber of Commerce and Convention and Visitors Bureau. In 2016, there are two candidates for the mayoral seat, Doug Anderson and Hisham Shaban. Mr. Shaban cannot be here tonight, so we've requested Mr. Anderson to share with us over the next six minutes his vision for the city of the for the city for a two-year term as mayor of Lakeville. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Lowell. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, let me begin by just saying thanks to the chamber and the city staff uh, for hosting and supporting these forums. I think it's a great way for all of us to get to know the candidates for the different local positions and tomorrow night for the state positions and for all of you to attend. I appreciate that. For those of us that live, that live here, we know Lakeville is a wonderful place to live, work, and raise a family. That's why Deb and I raised our kids Brian and Calista here and why we are still enjoying our empty nest with our cats, Zip and Chip. And before I go any further, I need to acknowledge Deb. We wouldn't be here without Deb being in my life and, living, uh, and, uh, and her family. Uh, Jerry and Martha is here, and my brother-in-law Scott and his wife Cindy. Over the years, I've had a wonderful career in finance and administration, working mainly in human services and at university. Now, for the first time in our lives, we are both semi-retired, and I have time to focus on the things that are most important to us. As for me, I'm an independent consultant and a coach, and Deb and I are, are distributors for AdvoCare nutritional products. I also serve on the Lakeview Bank Board, and I'm in my fourth year on the City Council. I've always been interested in public service, some call it politics, and about six years ago, I applied and was appointed to the newly formed City of Lakeville Financial Advisory Committee. Through that experience, I gained a greater awareness as to city financial matters and other things regarding the city as well, including the need for civil and respectful leaders on the City Council. Four years ago, my orange and blue campaign signs went up, and in the end, I had the privilege to be elected to my first term on the Lakeville City Council. That term ends at the end of this calendar year. But there's important work to do these next couple of years. First, we need to update the city's comprehensive plan. We also need to continue to work to guide the growth in housing to support the workforces for our businesses. And the ongoing work of being good stewards as to the use of our resources is important as well. We need to continue to focus on ensuring that our infrastructure and operations are in place. And finally, with two new members on the City Council, at least two new members on the City Council, there is a need for outstanding leadership. So that is why I'm a candidate for mayor. Let me just touch, uh, the, the chamber gave us three questions. We're gonna ask us three questions, and I'll just touch on a few of my thoughts regarding those three questions. The first one was about city services. Everything we do in the city is aligned with our constituents, the 60,000 people or so that live here and our business community. Um, back in 2013, we uh, did a planning process called Envision Lakeville 2040 to develop a vision for our city. We engaged over 800 citizens in that process and the following values were articulated by that group. Diversified economic development, good value for public services, safety throughout the community, design that connects the community, high quality education, a home for all ages and stages of life, a sense of community and belonging, and finally access to multitudes of natural amenities and recreational opportunities. Our community has high expectations, and we should. There, this is a great place to live, work, and experience life to the fullest. 
So the question was about city services. What are the essential city services? All of our services need to be aligned with this visioning process and what our citizens desire. Um, as you heard earlier, essential services include police and fire, public safety, but for me it also includes clean water. Um, those are the main ones that I would highlight. So what should the city be doing that we are not? Uh, in terms of major categories of service, I think we've got the bases covered pretty well. I don't believe that there are any additional service areas that are needed. As for specific things though, not those major areas, like a dog park, which we've just opened up, that was something our citizens desired. Sometimes we hear about a need for a splash park or another sheet of ice. Those are park and rec examples, but there are other requests we get from our citizens in terms of things in the community. For these types of things, we always need to step back and take a look at the context of all of our priorities. Uh, what should we be investing our resources in? How do we utilize those resources that we have? Uh, we do this on an annual basis through our budgeting process. What should the city not be doing? Um, this is interesting as well from some comments that were made earlier. I do not believe that government should be involved in private enterprise. In our case, that is the liquor business. That said, I have had the distinct privilege to be involved in all kinds of details around our liquor business. And I've, I've been able to gain an understanding about the financial, the business operations, and the community support outcomes that that business provides. By many metrics, we have the top municipal liquor business in the state, and we have outstanding leadership for that businesses. So we're gonna need to figure out a way to take a look at this as we go through our planning to develop a pathway. How do we engage private enterprise into the liquor business over the long run and do it in a way that doesn't sacrifice significant uh, resources from the city. Two quick comments in terms of infrastructure. The first is we need to keep, continue our accelerated residential road renewal program. While this is frustrating, I get a lot of calls from residents about having our roads fixed. It clearly is something we need to do. We need to fix our roads. And so we have taken advantage of the current economy and, and, and our strong credit rating as a city. And we've been able to lock in low cost financing at fixed rates to help us accelerate our work and get ourselves back on track in terms of an annual cycle as far as road improvements. The second thing I just wanna mention quickly is that we've done a really good job, the staff have done a really good job in terms of planning for clean water. And we've added a water tower, we've, we've added additional capacity to our water treatment facility, and that plan is in place for the next few years. As far as business activity, we're, we are very fortunate to have a strong, growing business community. Um, I wish I had more time to make more comments about our businesses, um, but I'm gonna skip over that because I am running out of time, and I would just like to make some specific comments and ask for your support for my candidacy for mayor. As mayor, I will continue to be an advocate for efficient, effective, and fairness. I believe that taxpayers deserve respect, and part of that respect is that we are good stewards of resources, and we have to provide value for your tax dollars. I'll continue to fight for the lowest levy increases every year. I like the comment earlier, maybe we don't even have to have an increase. I will continue to listen first, working to find a compromise we can all live with. I visit people to learn about their thoughts and perspectives. It is part of life that we sometimes disagree, even in a community like Lakeville. Whether it is the gravel pit, Highway 50 upgrades, the event center, restaurant patios, or other issues, I've always tried to go the extra mile to find ways to bring people together. I will be a servant leader. I don't believe that it is the role of a public official to be a showman or a figurehead. I'll continue to be respectful and I will ensure that citizens have their way at, have their say at city council meetings and continue to reach out to people to find out what they think. I will continue to focus on the details. Sometimes quality of life can be determined by the small decisions, not by the big plans. That's why I fought hard to make sure that simple things like striping the roundabout lanes at 185th 
and Highway 50 was completed. Believe it or not, this was still uncertain one week before that roundabout opened. It may be something people don't notice or know about, but if it wasn't striped, boy, would people have noticed. Yes, we have some fender benders, but just think what it would have been like without the lane striping. I will work to develop partnerships to keep our community vibrant. These days, economic development doesn't just happen by chance. It is very competitive. We need strong partnerships to support our efforts to reach out to businesses with the opportunity to succeed here in Lakeville. And finally, I will advocate for our city's interests with our neighbors and other entities. The things that determine our quality of life don't stop at the borders of Lakeville. We need to work with the county and our neighboring communities and our school districts to ensure that all of us succeed and that we all participate fairly in the costs of maintaining our infrastructure. And I am committed to local control, not letting the Met Council overreach their authority. My vision of leadership is very simple. The best leaders are servants first. Leaders listen, they don't dictate. Leaders support others' success, not their own. And leaders bring people together because the sum can be so much greater than the individual parts. When you boil it all down, what's my vision for Lakeville's government? It is that we're an enabler for our citizens and businesses to achieve their dreams. We are positioned to thrive. I humbly ask for your support for my candidacy for mayor and please vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I would like to thank and congratulate each of the candidates for running for the office of mayor and stepping up to lead our city. I would also like to thank the city of Lakeville and staff for the use of the facility and taping tonight's event. The forum will be rebroadcast on channel 180 and is also available on the city's website. The Lakeville Area Chamber of Commerce has not and will not endorse any candidate in any election this year. Good night and please remember to vote on no Tuesday, November 8th. Thank you. <laughs>